2061, and you can expand and that. Senator, I Senator, Senator Sanders, I, I just I want to bring it over to Juan Carlos Lopez from, uh, from CNN and Espanol. We're obviously in Nevada. It's had the highest percentage of undocumented immigrants of any state in the country as of last year. Juan Carlos. Gracias, Anderson. Senator Sanders, in 2013, you voted for immigration reform. But in 2007, when Democrats controlled Congress and the Bush White House was on board, you voted against it. Why should Latino voters trust you now when you left them at the altar at the moment when reform was very close? I didn't leave anybody at the altar. I voted against that piece of legislation because it had guest worker provisions in it, which the Southern Poverty Law Center talked about being semi-slavery. Guest workers are coming in, they're working under terrible conditions, but if they stand up for their rights, they're thrown out of the country. I was not the only progressive to vote against that legislation for that reason. Tom Hawken, a very good friend of Hillary Clinton's and mine, one of the leading labor advocates, also voted against that. Tom Harkin isn't running for president. I know you that. Are. But the point being is that progressives did vote against that for that reason. My view right now, and always has been, is that when you have 11 million undocumented people in this country, we need comprehensive immigration reform. We need a path toward citizenship. We need to take people out of the shadows. And Juan Carlos. Juan yes, Carlos. Secretary Clinton. Sure. Secretary Clinton. Governor O'Malley wants to open up Obamacare to millions of undocumented immigrants and their children, including almost 90,000 people right here in Nevada. Do you? Well, first of all, I want to make sure every child gets health care. That's why I uh, helped to create the Children's Health Insurance Program. And I want to support states that are expanding health care and including uh, undocumented uh, children and others. I want to open up the opportunity for uh, immigrants to be able to buy in to the exchanges under the Affordable Care Act. I think to go beyond that, as I understand what Governor O'Malley has recommended, so that they would get the same subsidies, I think that is a, it raises so many issues. It would be very difficult to administer. It needs to be part of comprehensive immigration reform when we finally do get to it. Governor O'Malley. Yeah, Juan Carlos, I think what you've heard up here is some of the old thinking on immigration reform, and it's why it's gridlocked. Uh, we need to understand that our country is made stronger in every generation by the arrival of new American immigrants. That is why I have put out a policy for comprehensive immigration reform. That is why I would go further than President Obama has on DACA and DAPA. I mean, we are a nation of immigrants. We are made stronger by immigrants. Do you think for a second that simply because somebody's standing in a broken queue on naturalization, they're not going to go to the hospital? and that care isn't going to fall onto our insurance rates. I am for a generous, compassionate America that says we're all in this together. We need comprehensive Senator immigration Webb. reform. It'll make wages go up in America, $250 for every Senator Webb, family. do you support the undocumented immigrants getting Obamacare? I wouldn't have a problem with that. Let me, let me start by, by saying my wife is an immigrant. She was a refugee. Her family escaped from Vietnam on a boat, her entire extended family, uh, after the communists took over, when hundreds of thousands of people were out there and thousands of them were dying. She went to two refugee camps. She never spoke English in her home, and she ended up, as I said, graduating from Cornell Law School. That's not only the American dream, that's the value that we have with a good immigration system in place. No country has, is a country without defining its borders. We need to resolve this issue. I, I actually introduced an amendment in the 07 Thank you, immigration Senator. bill, uh, giving a pathway to citizenship to those people who had come here and put down their roots and met a, a s series of uh, you, standards. Senator. We well, lost, I, I, I but I, I introduced that in 07. So I, we need a comprehensive reform, and we need to be able to define our borders. Secretary and Clinton. I, I, I want to follow up, because I think underneath Juan Carlos's important questions, there is such a difference between everything you're hearing here on this stage and what we hear from the Republicans here, here. who have demonized hardworking immigrants who have here. insulted them. You know, I came to Las Vegas in, I think, May, early May, met with a group of dreamers. I wish everybody in America could meet with these young people to hear their stories, to know their incredible talent, their determination. And that's why I would go Secretary. further than even the executive orders that President Obama has signed when I'm president. Secretary Clinton, let me ask you, two of your rivals from your left, Governor O'Malley and Senator Sanders, want to provide in-state college tuition to undocumented immigrants. Where do you stand on that? 
my plan would support any state that takes that position and would work with those states and encourage more states to do the same so thing. You, on the record, you believe that uh, undocumented immigrants should get in-state college tuition? If their states agree, then we want more states to do and, the same. Governor and, O'Malley? And Anderson, we actually did this in my state of Maryland. We passed a state version of the Dream Act. And a lot of the, uh, a lot of the xenophobes, the immigrant haters, like some that we've heard, like Donald Trump, that carnival barker in the Republican Party, uh, <laughs> tried to mischaracterize it as, as free uh, tuition for illegal immigrants. But we took our case to the people when it was petitioned to referendum, and we won with 58% of the vote. The more our children learn, the more they will earn, and that's true of children who have yet to be naturalized Senator, but will become American Senator citizens. Sanders, you talked about your record on the Veterans Affairs Committee. You served on that committee for the last eight years, including two years as its chairman, while veterans died waiting for health care. You and Senator McCain ultimately addressed the issue with bipartisan legislation. Why did it take 18 Inspector General reports and a CNN investigation and others before you and your colleagues took action? Well, I was chairman for two years. And when I was chairman, we did take action. What we did is pass a $15 billion piece of legislation which brought in many, many new doctors and nurses into the VA so that veterans in this country could get the health care when they needed it and not be on long waiting lines. And the other part of that legislation said that if a veteran is living more than yes. 40 miles away from a VA facility, that veteran could get health care from a community health center or the private sector. As a result of that legislation, we went further in, than any time in recent history in improving health care for the men and women of this country who put their lives on the line to defend us. Governor Chafee, you and Hillary Clinton both voted for the Patriot Act, which created the NSA surveillance program. You've emphasized civil liberties, privacy during your campaign. Aren't these two things in conflict? No, that was another uh, 99 to 1 vote uh, for the Patriot Act. And it was seen as, at the time, uh, modernizing our ability to do what we've always done to tap phones, which always required a warrant. And do you, I do you voted for that, that. Now, no, no. As long as you're getting a warrant, I believe that under the Fourth Amendment, uh, you should be able to do surveillance, but you need a warrant. That's what the Fourth Amendment says. And in the Patriot Act, Section 215 started to get uh, broadened too far. So I would be in favor of uh, addressing and re reforming Sec Section 215 of the Patriot Secretary Act. Secretary Clinton, do you regret your vote on the Patriot Act? No, I don't. I think um, that uh, it was necessary to make sure that we were able, after 9-11, to put in place the security that we needed. And it is true that it did require that there be a process. What happened, however, is that the Bush administration began to chip away at that process. And I began to speak out about their use of warrantless uh, uh, surveillance and the other behavior that they engage in. We always have to keep the balance of civil liberties, privacy, and security. It's not easy in a democracy. But we have to keep it in mind. And Senator, Senator Sanders, Sanders you're the only one on this stage who voted against the Patriot Act. Was it 99 in, in 2001? Or I was maybe the one. I don't know. And the reauthorization well, votes. The Let me ask you if elected, would you shut down the NSA surveillance program? I'm sorry? Would you shut down the NSA surveillance Absolutely, program? Absolutely, of course. You would. Well, Point blank. Well, I would shut down, make, I'd shut down what exists right now is that virtually every telephone call in this country ends up in a file at the NSA. That is unacceptable to me. But it's not just government surveillance. I think the government is involved in our emails, is involved in our websites. Corporate America is doing it as well. If we are a free country, we have the right to be free. Yes, we have to defend ourselves against terrorism, but there are ways to do that without impinging on our constitutional rights and our privacy Anderson, rights. Anderson, the NSA Ch is Governor, Ch Governor Chafee, Edward Snowden, is he a traitor or a hero? No, I would bring him home. The courts have ruled that what he did was, uh, what he did was say the American, bring him home, no jail the time? American government was acting illegally. That's what the federal courts have said. What Snowden did sh showed that the American government was acting illegally per the Fourth Secretary Amendment. So I would bring hero him home. Or traitor? Yes. He broke the laws of the United States. He could have been a whistleblower. He could have gotten all of the protections of being a whistleblower. He could have raised all the issues that he has raised. And I think there would have been a positive response uh, to that. Should he do in jail addition, time? In addition, he stole very important information that has unfortunately 
uh, fallen into a lot of the wrong hands. Governor so O'Malley? I don't think he should be brought home without facing the music. Governor O'Malley, Snowden. Anderson, Snowden put a lot of Americans' lives at risk. Snowden broke the law. Whistleblowers do not run to Russia and try to get protection from Putin. If he really believes that, he should be back here. Senator Sanders? Edward I, Snowden. I, I think um, Snowden played a very important role in educating the American people uh, to the degree in which our civil liberties and our constitutional rights are being undermined. Is he a hero? He did, he did break the law, and I think there should be a penalty to that. But I think what he did in educating us should be taken into consideration before he is Senator there. Webb, Edward Snowden. I, well, I, I would leave his ultimate uh, judgment to the legal system. Here's what I do believe. We have a serious problem in terms of the collection of personal information in this country. And one of the things that I did during the FISA bill in 2007, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, was introduced with Russ Feingold two amendments basically saying, we understand the realities of how you have to collect this broad information in the Internet age, but after a certain period of time, you need to destroy the personal information that you have if people have not been uh, brought, if criminal justice proceedings have not been brought against them. We've got a vast data bank of information that is ripe for people with bad intentions to be able to use, and another, they need to be destroyed. Another question for each of you, starting with, uh, with Governor Chafee. Name the one thing, the one way that your administration would not be a third term of President Obama. Certainly ending the wars. Uh, we've got to stop these wars. We have, a, we have to have a new dynamic, a new paradigm. Uh, we're just spent half a billion dollars arming and training soldiers, the, the rebel soldiers in Syria. They quickly joined the other side. President Obama's we generals right now are suggesting keeping troops in Afghanistan a after the time he wanted them pulled out. Would you yeah, keep like them there? I'd like to finish my question, my, my answer. Uh, and also we just bombed a hospital. We've uh, had drone strikes that uh, hit civilian weddings. So I would change how we, our approach to the Middle East. We need a new paradigm in the Middle East. Governor O'Malley, how would you be different than President Obama's administration? I would follow through on the promise that the American people thought we made as Democratic Party to protect the Main Street economy from recklessness on Wall Street. I would push to separate out these too big to jail, too big to fail banks and, and, in, and put in place Glass-Steagall, a modern Glass-Steagall that creates a firewall so that this wreckage of our economy can never happen again. Secretary Clinton, how would you not be a third term of President Obama? Well, I think that's pretty obvious. Um, I, I think being the first woman president would be quite a change from the presidents we've had up until this point, including uh, President Obama. Is there a policy difference? Well, there is a lot that I uh, would like to do to build on the successes of President Obama but also, as I'm laying out, to go beyond. And that's in my economic plans, how I would deal with the prescription drug companies, how I would deal with college, how I would deal with a full range of issues that I've been talking about throughout this campaign to go further. Senator Sanders? I have a lot of respect for President Obama. I have worked with him time and time again on many, many issues. But here's where I do disagree. I believe that the power of corporate America the power of Wall Street, the power of the drug companies, the power of the corporate media, is so great that the only way we really transform America and do the things that the middle class and working class desperately need is through a political revolution when millions of people begin to come together and stand up and say our government is going to work for all of us, not just a handful of billionaires. Senator Webb, how would he not be a third term for Obama? I got a great deal of admiration and affection for Senator Sanders, but I, I, Bernie, I don't think the revolution's going to come, and I don't think the Congress is going to pay for a lot of this stuff. And if there would be a major difference between my administration and the Obama administration, it would be in the use of executive authority. I came up as a committee counsel in the Congress, used to put dozens of bills through the House floor every year as a committee counsel in the Veterans Committee. I have a a very strong feeling about how our federal system works and how we need to lead and energize the congressional process instead of allowing these divisions to continue to paralyze what we're doing. So I would lead working with 
both parties in the Congress and working through them in the traditional way that our Constitution Senator is Sanders, he cited you. You don't hear a lot of Democratic presidential candidates talking about revolution. What do you mean? What I mean is that we need to have one of the larger voter turnouts in the world, not one of the lowest. We need to raise public consciousness. We need